The Revelation of John is a text written in a genre called Hebrew apocalyptic literature, and he draws from ancient sources for his symbolism, such as Joel, Zechariah, Isaiah, Enoch, and Daniel. The author wrote the book on an island called Patmos, which lies in the Aegean Sea. During John's time, it was a prison island used by the Romans, and he was exiled there. This would have taken place just before 100 AD. As with all the Jewish apocalyptic literature, it is entrenched in psychedelic references and astrotheology. The combining of those elements gives us something which reads like a cosmic horror novel, with trumpeting angels, fiery dragons, sacred scrolls, thundering storms and mass deaths. He wrote down Revelation in a cave, now known as the Cave of the Apocalypse. It has become a famous Christian pilgrimage destination. Apocalypse itself means an unveiling of events unknowable until such events actually unfold. It is a revelation, hence the name of the book itself. The chances of John experiencing an intense series of psychedelic visions is extremely likely, though still debated, of course. Everything from cave fumes, sacred mushrooms, morning glory, and even ingredients to create an ayahuasca-like brew all can be found on the island during that time. I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me, and when I turned I saw seven golden lampstands, and among the lampstands was someone, like a son of man, dressed in a robe reaching down to his feet, and with a golden sash around his chest, the hair on his head was as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp, double-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining in all its brilliance. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, and now look. I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and Hades. Write, therefore, what you have seen, and what is now, and what will take place. But this island was special before John wrote his revelation in a cave. It was one of the holiest islands to the ancient Greeks. This was the island of Artemis. An old temple of Artemis was built over by a monastery to St. John. An inscription was preserved that reads, The most august island of the daughter of Leto. Leto was Artemis's mother, along with her twin Apollo. There seems to be a long history of goddess worship here and use of special herbs, and perhaps cave fumes as well made this island particularly suited for religious experiences. It was no different for John. And this is where we begin to see some interesting links. In Revelation chapter 8 verses 10 to 13, the third angel sounded his trumpet, and a great star, blazing like a torch, fell from the sky, on a third of the rivers, and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters turned bitter, and many people died from the waters that had become bitter. Wormwood is part of a very special family of plants called none other than Artemisia. Wormwood is scientifically known as Artemisia absinthium, named of course after the goddess Artemis, who rules over many things such as the hunt, the moon, childbirth, vegetation, and herbs. Wormwood appears in the Bible several times and was a staple in the ancient world for medicinal purposes. It is one of the most powerful medicinal plants in the world, and is capable of even giving hallucinogenic and psychoactive experiences, thought to be because of a compound called Thujo. Today, Wormwood is most famous for the drink called the Green Fairy, or Absinthe, though it has been banned in some places of the world. Prolonged use of Wormwood can lead to nervous system damage. Short-term use, however, can do what its name suggests, and is the source of its mythological folk and medicinal properties, to purge worms and parasites from the body. In chapter 10, John is ordered to eat a scroll, 
So I went to the angel and asked him to give me the little scroll. He said to me, Take it and eat it, and it will turn your stomach sour, but in your mouth it will be as sweet as honey. I took the little scroll from the angel's hand and ate it. It tasted as sweet as honey in my mouth, but when I had eaten it, my stomach turned sour. Then I was told, You must prophesy again about many peoples, nations, languages, and kings. So here we can clearly see how the scrolls were the source of the visions and prophecy from which John was inspired by. Obviously, pinpointing the exact entheogen or herb from that is always going to be speculative. Any substance can be sweetened with honey and then feel bitter in the stomach, as most strong psychoactive substances give the most potent experiences through the gut, through ingestion. Wormwood is certainly a contender and was known throughout the ancient world, but so were mushrooms, morning glory, and other psychoactive resins and herbs. In a previous video, I explained a theory that apocalyptic dreams and visions could be a sign of parasitic infection due to the motifs of large dragons and serpents, along with the devouring insects and other plague themes, followed by declining health of the dreamer. Revelation is no different. The four horsemen bring with them famine, pestilence, war, and death. Those things start on the microbial, decomposition, sickness, and people turning on each other is often the result of various infections and mind-altering parasites. Then, of course, the primary antagonist of Revelation appears, a red dragon, called the Old Serpent and the Devil, Satan. The etymology of worm, dragon, and Revelation are very similar. Dragon, used in the Revelation, is dracon, meaning a large serpent. This comes from Durkomai, I see clearly, to watch, and Dirk, the Proto-Indo-European word, to see. Dragons, snakes, sea serpents, werewolves, drakes, worms, leviathans, all these have related or similar meanings and, and etymologies, and it is often blended with worms. Worm and worm being the most obvious connection. But the idea of Durkomai may have connotations related to revelations, to see things unveiled. I do not think there is many apocalyptic stories from around the world that do not feature serpents or dragon in some significant way. Having that vision to see clearly the microscopic parasites, the dragons in the body, often requires some level of dreams and psychedelic experiences. The signature of the parasites in the body. The body interprets what is happening to itself in cataclysmic symbols. Wormwood is part of plants called mugworts, which in turn is thought to come from midge, a type of fly, an insect. Mugwort is similar to wormwood in its ability to fight off a number of insects and parasites from the body. Furthermore, is another plant in that family called tarragon, or Artemisia dracunculus. Tarragon is another derivative of dracon and turcomai. I find it interesting the deworming abilities of the Artemisia plants and their association with dragons and goddesses, as well as their known ability to cause dreams and other hallucinatory and nervous system interactions. I speculate that John wrote down Revelation over the course of his time imprisoned on the island, drawing from a scholarly background in the ancient Jewish texts. I believe he experienced many forms of psychedelic vision on that island in the old Artemis cave. There is a variety of plants and herbs and mushrooms that can grow in the general region, and again the cave itself, as most caves, can produce fumes that lead to euphoria and hallucinations in the form of methane, carbon dioxide, and hydrogen sulfide. People in prison learn to become resourceful, and doubly there was a long tradition of rituals and worship on that island, and in that cave, that perhaps was maintained up through John's stay there, or at least the preparation of certain herbs was maintained. But living in prison conditions in a musky cave can lead to an assortment of health issues, and the brackish water of the island means it had to be purified, and if it was not consumed, the stagnant water easily becomes breeding grounds for parasites and worms. 
John could have gone through a series of delirious experiences, worsening health, and consuming powerful herbs to remedy that, and all the while writing down what he was seeing in relation to the astrotheology of the apocalyptic style of Jewish writing, and incorporating all his visionary symbolism, universal motifs of sickness, parasites, and psychedelic experiences and vivid dreams. Maybe this is the icing on the cake of coincidences, but the island of Patmos is shaped like a sea dragon. And this is why I have dubbed the Book of Revelation to the Book of Worms. We cannot begin to understand ancient mythology and religious texts without a strong basis in herbs and botany, as well as astrology and the interactions of microorganisms. Thanks for watching.